Yes, it is. And, and, and I have actually, um, I've made a commitment to them. Uh, I made a commitment to the Law Officers Association of Nigeria that if elected uh, president of the NBA, uh, I would address that issue uh, and one other issue. Um, the, the issue of, uh, the two issues they've raised with me, because I've interacted with them quite extensively. The first is their desire to be registered uh, with the CAC uh, as an association under Part C. And I've told them that I have absolutely no problem with that. Um, I, I used to be, I was the pioneer secretary, then vice chairman, and then chairman of the Capital Market Solicitors Association. Um, and that association had similar challenges with the NBA at the time. It took us maybe about three, four, five years before we could convince the NBA to withdraw its objection to our uh, application to register with the CAC. Um, so, so what I've said to, to Loan is that they should consider doing uh, exactly what we did. Uh, and what we did um, to assuage the NBA's concerns, which was that we were going to balkanize the bar, uh, was to say to them that, look, we recognize that the NBA is the umbrella body for all legal practitioners in Nigeria. And that what we would do is that in the CMSA, the Capital Market Solicitors Association's constitution, would make it a condition for membership of the association that you have to be a member in good standing of the NBA as a precondition to being a member of CMSA. Making it clear that CMSA was not a parallel body to the NBA, but was a subset. It's just a body that's been set up to cater for the interests of members of the NBA who are engaged in capital markets work. So same way, uh, I don't see any reason why loans should not register. They're members of the NBA, just that they're members of the NBA who happen to have a common interest, which is that they're law officers. Uh, if they do that, I, I would definitely not have any objection to their registering. The issue of their appointment or their being eligible for election uh, uh, to national office is slightly more tricky. There's a provision in the NBA constitution that actually affects not just them, but all lawyers who are not private practitioners. Uh, I think it's section 8.3, which says that to be eligible to run for national office, you must be a private practitioner. Now, what I've said to them is, I don't think that there's justification for that blanket um, restriction. However, I think that there is justification for some restriction. Because after all, uh, we all must be jealous to protect the independence of the legal profession. Uh, a Nigerian Bar Association that is headed by law officers who are employees of government, I don't think will be considered to be particularly independent. And secondly, you know, I, I don't have the statistics, which again is a problem, but I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that private practitioners constitute the majority of lawyers in Nigeria who are members of the NBA. So if you reserve certain positions to the majority, and if you reserve certain positions in order to protect the independence of the association, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But then I don't think that that's justification for saying, you know, only private practitioners can uh, run for national office. So my view would be that we should look at amending uh, the constitution to reserve certain offices, perhaps the office of the president, the office of the general secretary, who are the key uh, officers of the association, and maybe the offices of the vice president. Reserve that for private practitioners. But other offices, I don't see why law officers, corporate counsel, in-house counsel uh, cannot run for them.